In the last episode we heard that we sometimes, probably more often than we think, imitate the behavior of other people. Like for example if they are shaking their foot or if they are scratching their face, crossing their arms. The chances are that we ourselves also start shaking our foot, touching our face or crossing our arms. And the main reason for this behavior seems to be our motivation to affiliate with another person, to connect with the other person. And the big question for this episode will be, does this actually work? I mean, what happens if another person imitates our behavior on purpose? What are the psychological effects? Do we really feel more sympathy for this person? Are we going to be more helpful towards this person? And maybe, and that's what marketing experts are interested in, maybe it makes us also buy more products that we don't really need. But before we take a look at behavioral consequences, let's first take a look what are the consequences of mimicry on our attitudes, on our thinking. And one of the first studies in this respect is the study by Maurer and Tyndall, published in 1983 in the Journal of Counseling Psychology. The title of the study was Effects of Postural Congruence on Client's Perception of Counselor Empathy. Participants were 80 pupils who had a counseling session with a psychologist about their future career. So what are their interests, their strengths, and therefore which kind of job would be interesting for them. And during this session, the psychologist either used no imitation, so he behaved like usual, but in the second condition, he used nonverbal imitation, which means that he copied the body language of the pupil. If she or he was leaning forward, the counselor also leaned forward. Of course, he didn't immediately copy the behavior because this might have been too obvious. He therefore usually waited for about 30 seconds until he adapted his body language. By the way, in more recent studies, scientists found that you don't have to wait 30 seconds. It's already appropriate to wait 3 to 4 seconds because almost nobody realizes that you are imitating their body language. Um, after this counseling session, the pupils were asked how empathic was the counselor. And it really turned out that when the counselor had copied their body language, the counselor was perceived as more empathic. So it's no wonder that nowadays in counseling and in therapy, techniques like active listening, but also sometimes nonverbal imitation is used to establish a better connection, is used to create rapport. Because in counseling and in therapy, it's of course very important that clients give honest answers to quite intimate questions, because otherwise it can get very difficult to make a progress. And that mimicry can be really helpful in this respect could be shown in the study by Giger and colleagues published in 2013. And the title of their study was Using Mimicry to Elicit Answers to Intimate Questions in a Survey. 240 passers-by were asked whether they would participate in a short survey. And the first questions were quite harmless, but the longer the survey lasted, the more intimate the questions became. So there were questions like, for example, how old were you when you had sex for the first time? Or have you ever been in a sex shop? Or how often do you have sex? How often do you masturbate? Do you perform oral sex during intercourse? Have you ever had homosexual intercourse? Or, and this was the last question, do you perform sodomy during intercourse? And as you might guess, not all these questions were answered by the participants. And the big question was, depending on the behavior of the questioner, which in one condition used on the one hand verbal imitation, which meant that when the other person said, well, I was 17 when I had sex for the first time, then the requester just copied these words and said, so you were 17 when you had sex for the first time. Whereas in the control condition, the questioner just said, 
Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. But not only verbal imitation was used, they also used non-verbal imitation, which meant when the other person was touching her face or scratching her face, the questioner was also scratching her face. And it turned out when verbal and non-verbal imitation was used, more intimate questions were answered. Take for example the question, have you ever been in a sex shop? In the control condition only about 21% of the participants were willing to answer this question, whereas in the experimental condition 71% of the participants gave an answer to this question. So again mimicry seemed to have created a maybe unconscious connection between the two persons and therefore the participants tended to reveal more secrets about themselves.